The soundtrack for this expansion is unreasonably good. Soken has outdone himself. As he is wont to do. Never I thought these feats would have us battling dire fiends or similar. Agriculture is a far thornier problem. I see they irrigate the fields by diverting water from the neighboring river. It's unlikely the reeds ever dry out. Look at these fields. Oh, this could be a painting. Yeah, it very much could. Which button it is? No. There it is. I know she wants to do her best, but she should be careful not to make promises she cannot keep. And I'll stand back. I'll get to the bottom of this problem in no time. Give me strength. Let us all scour the fields and help our bold leader identify anything unusual. Each your eyes upon the fields of gold. Well, they're usually a treat for the senses, but I'm afraid our reeds have all seen better days. Reeds form the backbone of Hanu Hanu society, and I've wanted to contribute by tending these fields. Nothing I've tried can spur their growth. I'm afraid the next harvest will be disappointing. I want nothing more to, but to savor their sweet taste and share it with my brothers and sisters. Just imagining a bundle of reeds in my mouth makes it water. These fields got their name from the color of the sprouting reeds, though you wouldn't believe it to see them now. Such an enchanting sight. I don't know how to bring it back. They're all wilted. What happened? As Zeno Holly described, the reeds appear wilted and unhealthy. The petty water. Water contains no obvious contaminants and looks fresh and clear at a cursory glance. Okay. Eddie Mud. Oil in the patties is as one would expect rich in color and suitably moist, not dry nor flaky. A lethargic frog. A small frog catches your eyes. Strangely lackadaisical, it doesn't even bother to hop when it eventually scurries away. Whatever it is, is affecting more than just the reeds, then. Oh, a water strider. It's sluggish, though. More of a water shambler. Shambler? Uh-oh. Not a miss with the patties themselves, as far as I can tell. Any luck? Yeah, seems bad. Shit's fucked, yo. Hmm. enough, I'll call everyone together and we can share our discoveries. Well, what do we think? Any obvious problems? 
I agree, the waters look to be of good quality, as does the mud in which the reeds have been planted. Frogs and insects are unusually torpid. It suggests the problem is affecting not only the reeds, but also the creatures which live among them. Something invisible to the naked eye be polluting the water? But need an alchemist to know for certain. I happen to be an alchemist <laughs> of world renown. Mill. Much to add about the fields, but something else occurs to me. When you were describing how the creatures seemed lifeless, I couldn't help but be reminded of all the listless villagers. Suffered a terrible tragedy, I know, but there's another reason for their flagging spirits, I believe. Go on. Hildebrand moment. A festival. This is traditionally an occasion for celebration and renewal, so without it, the Han were struggling even more to recover. Last time I visited, the village was in the middle of the festivities. You'll never see the Hanu Hanu more joyful and alive. An indispensable part of their culture. Its absence will only compound their woes. So I say we help them put on their festival, give them a reason to cheer in these sad times. Who knows, maybe fixing one problem could lead us to a solution to the other. Stranger things have happened. Right? <laughs> I fail to see the relation between festivals and fields. Let's not be too hasty in dismissing the idea. Things which seem unrelated can later prove to be connected in surprising ways. True, and being bereft of ideas as we are, any proposal is worth entertaining. I, I suppose. Besides, this is Loklamot's Luk journey. Only right that we follow her lead. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. By the way, anyone know where the festival float is? It's like a boat woven from reeds that looks like a bird. Yeah, it was over in the other house over there. In that big building in the north. Go and see it. There's much less debate when I'm traveling alone. hell is that though? Yo, golden colibris. Look at that. Oh, the Skywatchers have a new look, finally. They're in blue now instead of red. <laughs> it's just the same outfit, just a different color. There's that guy who can't drive again. The size of that thing, they don't expect me to care. Yeah, I've been here during festival season, so this is all new to me, too. A charming float. I wonder what bird was the inspiration for its design. Handles give me pause before. Now I understand their purpose. Yes, this is the float I remember. Hmm. Does not appear. So does it not appear somewhat damaged to you? We should take a look. Select the festival float. You may move the camera as well as zoom in and out. Target the select a section and examine it in more detail with R two or X. Okay. 
Does anybody see the shoe bill? That seems to be broken. Well, that's definitely broken. Well, they lift this great big vessel without all the carrying poles intact. Here, one of the bird's eyes seems to be missing a gemstone. What else is broken? Oh, those feathers are all fucked up. Tail feathers have seen better days. I swear the colors were a lot brighter the last time I saw them. Well, I think we can all agree this bird boat is in dire need of repairs. Now, how do we go about fixing it? Brusk Hanu. What's going on here? You're admiring your festival float. It's a shame it's in such a poor state. Due to the recent storm, I gather. Yes, yeah, so we had to leave it exposed while we ushered our people to safety. If float in this condition, there can be no lifting of wings. No Ihihana. Ihihana, that's what the festival was called. I want to help you hold it. You haven't seen our village? Homes are ruined. We're struggling to make repairs, and you want us to hold a harvest festival? I know how it sounds, but giving in to misery has never improved anyone's situation. A celebration of life and growth may help you give help give you the strength to work through the tragedy. Well, a festival leader is mine this year, and there's nothing I would like more than to lift everyone's spirits. You don't even have enough materials to repair the float. We need Aboxia for the missing eye, Uyoko wood for the poles and feathers from the winds chosen to adorn the tail. Two of these I know. Aboxia is a type of precious stone used in arcane equipment. Upio wood is essential for crafting a ceremonial instruments. Chosen feathers, however. The winds chosen is the victor of a competition in which the contestants see who can blow a feather the furthest using wind magic. That's something of a problem right now. We Hanu Hanu were gifted at employing such airy sorceries, but expend a great deal of mana when doing so. We are soon exhausted by the effort, and having no reeds to eat will only make it harder. I think I understand. Your vibrant reeds grow quickly and vigorously, so much so that they stifle the development of nearby plants. They must be a potent source of the energies you naturally lack. They are indeed. When to the poor harvest this year, we've been left en enervated. We cannot gather the correct materials as dictated by custom, we cannot repair the festival float. Hmm. Oddly enough, we may have just stumbled upon our solution. Wind's chosen wood, by necessity, have a natural gift for manipulating magical energies. Which means any feathers taken from the victor should be high in ethereal conductivity. The float's construction also requires a stone used in arcane equipment, as well as timber favored for ceremonial tools. The demand for such specific materials must have an underlying reason. The float might also function as an arcane device. Precisely what I was thinking. This boat of reeds is in fact an arcane focus of some kind. Focus? For what? Oh, Ihihana is a harvest festival, isn't it? That must mean the float was made to encourage healthy crops. If we repair the boat and hold the festival, its arcane powers might fix what's wrong with the reeds. We won't know until we try. This is a sound theory. Celebration, prayer, ritual, ceremonies have all been known to elicit miraculous effects. Wait, wait, wait. The float? A tool for magic? This is the first I'm hearing of it. In the beginning, it may not have been. For a good harvest here, there would have been no reason to change it. When the harvest was poor, new adornments were likely added. 
Those who performed the labor may have imbued their work with ardent hopes for a brighter future. Through years of trial and error, the Han would have refined the festival float into a focus for harvest prayers. Incredible. I knew your practicality fainting, practically fainting from hunger, but reviving Inihana really seems like a solution to all your woes. I promise we'll do everything in our power to help you. Still not convinced about this focus business, but I accept your aid nonetheless. I'll we'll introduce you to the shipwright who's been maintaining the float for these last few years. You replaced both the eyes and the poles before, so we should know where and how to procure what we need. Allow Alize and I to acquire the feathers. We'll encourage the people of Akhanu to gather and vie for the title of winds chosen by sharing with them our own reserves of mana. I'll go with you. I carry some alchemical brews that may afford the same effect. I gotta find rocks and wood then. Three of us will visit the ship right then. Not without me. I've worked hard to fix the float as best I can, and the responsibility is mine, after all. I've not introduced myself, have I? My name is Linuhanu. Nice to meet you, Linuhanu. Certainly. All go together. I'm gonna fix the thing. I find myself working alongside the third promise herself is unexpected, to say the least. Making progress now, the solution Akhanu's woes is as good as found. Thanks to Wuklamat, we found ourselves a promising way forward. Experiencing and knowledge are valuable assets. There is something to be said for following one's instincts. Boots. Are boots an upgrade? Boots are not an upgrade. We can hold that for another class. A lot of these are probably going to get used for summoner, I would think. The shipwright's name is Wook Ivu. He's a Zebral who only moved to Kazumaku a few years ago, but it sends Master at our customs to an almost frightening degree. He's especially strict when it comes to manners, so make sure to offer him a proper Hanu Hanu greeting. I wouldn't want to offend him right before asking a favor. Proper Hanu Hanu greeting? Oh, that one. Don't worry, I remember how it goes. We shouldn't have any problems. Let's head to Akbek Bay. Aww. Did we disconnect it again? Oh, that was just the game this time. It seems to just be server instability, though. Well, we might be waiting a moment here. Let me grab something to snack on then real quick. We'll have to continue this story pressingly forward in a moment. Yeah, it seems that we we all got kicked off the server at once, so everybody's all trying to log back in at the same time. Uh oh. This happens.
husband blows emo wife. <laughs> Why would you abandon that? Go to the bathroom real quick or wait for did that package arrive? It did. Okay, so I'll have to go get that. A little while. Oh, the uh, SGDQ shirts are up. What shirts do we have this year, actually? I'm curious. There's always at least one shirt that I'm excited to get. They have a Splash Woman one, which is the only female one I'm aware of. Oh, there's a really cool Twilight Princess one this year. A pretty sick Hollow Knight one. There's another Crab's Treasure in here this time. Nice. Oh, the speedrunning shirt for SGDQ is a uh, Mario RPG one. Cool. There's a pretty solid lineup of uh, stuff this year, actually. Not gonna lie. Perhaps I will set aside some purchasing power. Got TC'd? Yeah, it looks like the NAD says, uh, data center just decided to shit its pants. I got nuggies in the air fryer, so. It's all good. My internet took a shit earlier today, too, so it happens. But we'll make it back in. The queues go pretty quick. Good time to use the potty. How far along have you made it, Asterisk? Like, level-wise. I feel like with us being in the second zone now for, like, the starting area at level 90, I've got Gunbreaker at almost 91, and then we've got Samurai at 91, which means we're going to get Scholar Summoner at 91 next, because that'll set those four up for the dungeon, and then it's going to be Machinist is going to have to do what it did last time, is go through all the the fates, but now we have to do all the other classes I have at 90. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to be able to run the dungeons. So we're going to have to stop. We're, we're dangerously close to dungeon and fate farming. Dangerously close. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to be that time where we're going to end up behind for a few days. What in the hell is going on? In these discords today that I have not seen. 
We're back in now. But now we're gonna wait for my nuggies to be finished. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> so we're gonna wait for that. We're gonna, we're gonna break for lunch here for a moment. I hope everybody's been enjoying the Final Fantasy XIV. If you're playing or just watching, I hope you've been having a good time. Oh, I just realized they added a Dark Souls. Or no, it's Elden Ring now. Um, Twitch badge. I just saw that. <laughs> I was like, what the hell badge is that? It's not mine. Is it? My nuggies are done, chat. This is good news. Oh god. <laughs> Holy shit, Prezcade, how did you end up with a 4300 Q? Wow, I feel bad for you guys on uh, Not Crystal. Thanks. I haven't seen this like that since I was a promo. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I looked over. I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> what the hell happened over there?" There are a lot of people on that data center, apparently. <laughs> Astros, how bad was your uh, was your queue? Are you back in, or are you uh, are you waiting? I'm in shambles. I'm so close to the end. Good lord, dude! I'm still in the second zone. Great. I'm walking through the game like Mr. Fucking Bean over here, so I'm not surprised that everyone's like way ahead of me right now. <laughs> yeah, I've also been playing reasonable human hours and spent my morning taking a shower. I went to the grocery store. I cleaned my house. I did my dishes. <laughs> yeah, you and you and Vitinsky have not slept. <laughs> you guys are you guys are, are gremlin gaming over there. I, I have not done that since... God, when was the last time I put that many hours into, like, an expansion launch? That had to be, like, Mists of Pandaria. Yeah, I, w I, w I think Mist was probably the last time I gremlin that hard for an expansion launch. I could be showering during this queue. Unfortunate. I mean, who can really, who can, like, truly know that that's gonna happen, though, like... 
the whole servers just drop on the whole NA data center? Like, come on, what are the odds of that? I'm never showering again. Packs for the gift sub. <laughs> okay, Aniv. I had to explain last night what a Niv was <laughs> to my mod, because Freelance is like, is a Niv a bot because he talks like a bot? I was like, yes, a Niv is a Markovian trained bot, and it knows all about Super Metroid and Bible Black. If you need to understand why it knows about specifically Super Metroid and Bible Black, you need to go ask Oats and Goats' chat room. But otherwise, it's harmless and very funny, which is why a nib is here. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. I can't. <laughs> I haven't seen cues like that since I, like I said, I was on Balmung. When I was on Balmung, it was bad, which was part of why I got off of Balmung was every release was like that. <laughs> Whether it was a patch or an expansion, it was infinite people trying to log in was like, yeah, I don't want to be on this server anymore. So I moved over to Mateus because this is where my friends who started in Shadowbringers all were because they couldn't make characters on Belmung and they were like, well, I'm not going to try and make a character at two in the morning or make a character and then pay to transfer it to another server. That's silly. So I went, yeah, that makes sense. I'll just transfer off. <laughs> I don't think... Let me take a look. Because it'll be back on by now. Most of my friends... Yeah. Really the only one on the day? Weird. All my friends that did play with me when I started playing the game don't play anymore. Aside from, I think, one of them. And then all my new friends don't play on that server. So it's like, why am I staying on this server? We don't need to stay here. Mateus ended up just evolving into more chill Balmung anyway, so I was like, well, fuck, why don't I just go there? <laughs> hmm. I will admit, Chimkin is hot, but it's very good. I got blue cheese today instead of, uh, I opted for the blue cheese. I wanted something, I, I've had a lot of hot sauce, and I think it's, like, starting to fuck up my intestinal tract. I'm starting to think I've had too much spicy over the last, like, two weeks, so... I've opted for something far more mild. <laughs> Dude, that secret artwork is so good, though. <laughs> It's so good. I bought a bottle of it. I burned through a bottle of it in like three weeks. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. This is probably why I've been a little sick recently. <laughs> so good. Put that shit on chicken. Put that shit in burritos. Put that shit on rice. <laughs> God, and put it on everything. I'd put it on peanut butter and jelly if it wouldn't overpower the peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, I've noticed Wegmans started carrying it up here. And that was, that was pretty sick. I, they have, Wegmans has the the verde sauce, the regular sauce, and then the like the darker brownish colored one. I don't normally like the verde sauce. Ooh, their verde sauce is so good. I, I was very surprised.
so ein Dunneaton Chicken. There's nobody out there. I think the package that came earlier was um, my physical edition for Dave the Diver. But I'll go pick that up later tonight. Yeah, we've got like a... Like an Amazon locker thing. All my Amazon shit always ends up in there, but... It got dropped off today, so I got a code to go pick it up at the locker setup. So I'll, I'll just go get that later. I'm kind of hopeful that that doesn't get... I, I, like, if I can make it where it doesn't update the cartridge. Because I think the physical edition has the Godzilla stuff built onto it, so I can just always have the Godzilla stuff then. That's part of why I got it. Because I know the Godzilla stuff is limited because they only have a licensing for it for so long. So it's like, well, if it has that on, I'd like to have it just because Dave deserves a spot on a physical shelf because it's a really fucking good video game. So I got the Switch version of it to put on my on my bookshelf, but I'm hoping it has the uh, it has the Godzilla stuff built onto that cart. Dave, Dave is great. Dave, I, I think I have like three or four achievements to finish to like 100%, 100% it. And I think there's there's one secret I have not figured out in Dave, but otherwise I've done everything. It's so good. The Godzilla, I think I, I think I did like all the Godzilla thing in like one like evening. So it's not super long, but it's, it's super cool. If you're a fan of Godzilla in any capacity, it is, it is a must play. It's a must-play event. It's so good. Wash my hands and we can keep playing. start keeping a towel in the kitchen. I just went and was like, I'll wash my hands in the kitchen sink. There's no towel in the kitchen. <laughs> There's nothing to dry my hands with. I have paper towel, but I haven't opened it because I don't have a paper towel holder, so they just kind of sit and then they fall in the sink. So I'm like, well, I'll just leave it under the sink for now. <laughs> and of course, I have no towel rack either. Oh yeah, I think I have a short week at work this week because of the holiday. That'd be fucking, that'd be nice. Granted, I'm going to spend 4th of July with my family, so we won't be on all day with this. <laughs> Alright, 